What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today we're going to talk about how to play faster notes when you improvise. One of the questions I'm asked the most by intermediate improvisers is how do I play faster notes in my improv solos? Generally, they have the ability, the technique to play faster notes, but they're not quite sure how to work them into their solos. So today, I'm going to show you a really simple step-by-step -step process that you can use to get comfortable playing faster notes in your improvised solos. To do this, we are going to use a G Mixolydian scale. So a G Mixolydian scale is a major scale with a flat 7. So in the case of G, it would be G to G with all natural. So you're going to change your F sharp to an F natural. And because we're going to be doing this in an improvised way, we are going to be swinging these eighth notes. This is your G Mixolydian scale. The concept of fast notes is relative to your playing ability. But with this process, you can do it at any tempo that you're comfortable at. So you could do this at 100 beats per minute, or 150 beats per minute, 200 beats per minute, or 80 beats per minute, whatever you're comfortable with. So the whole idea behind getting faster notes into your improv solos is just getting comfortable playing these faster notes. To start this process, we are going to plan where our fast notes go. And we're going to start off with playing a triplet. Specifically, we're going to start off with playing a triplet on beat one. So I'm going to use my G Mixolydian scale to improvise. Uh, I'm going to be doing mostly scale-wise motion, but I'm going to be going beyond the roots. So I'm going to go above a high G and below a, a low G. And I'm going to snake through the scale a little bit. But at this point, my main goal isn't to play the coolest solo ever. It's just to get really comfortable playing these faster notes. So I'm going to play triplet two and three and four and triplet two and three and four and. So I'm going to be int introducing the triplet on beat one. It'll sound like this. One, two, three. When I plan where those fast notes are going to be, I can prepare for them, I can get used to the way the line's going to sound, and as I do it, I start to get a lot more comfortable with it. That's how you're going to introduce these faster notes. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to put the triplet on beat two. So my counting will be one and triplet three and four and. One, two, three. Now I'm going to put it on beat three. So it'll be one and two and triplet four and. One, two, ready. That time you could hear I switched up the order of the notes a little bit more. So as you get more comfortable with this concept, you want to try and snake your way through the scale as opposed to just going up and going down. Now, of course, the last step for this would be putting the triplet on beat four. So the counting would be one and two and three and triplet, one and two and three and triplet. One, two, three. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're a saxophone player. If that is the case and you would like to add some structure into your saxophone playing, I'd like to invite you to check out the Scott Paddock Sax School, where I'll take the guesswork out of what to practice, how to practice it, and what to practice next, and give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a better saxophone player. If you'd like to check out the Sax School, I'll put a link in the description below. So far we have played triplets on beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. Now we're going to double up our triplets and we're going to play a triplet on beat one and two and then eighth notes on three and four. So the counting will be triplet, triplet, three, and four, and. So we're just getting used to putting these triplets together to get a longer, faster moving line. You can hear that line getting faster as we combine these triplets. Now we're going to do it on beats two and three, so the counting will be one and triplet, triplet, four, and. And finally, we are going to put the triplets on beats three and four, so the counting will be one and two and triplet, triplet. And 
And from there, you would just improvise using your G Mixolydian scale and putting in triplets whenever you wanted to. So you can hear that line moving faster and faster as I connect more of these triplets. Again, the whole idea with using this process to learn how to play faster notes in your improv solos is to just get really comfortable putting these faster notes in. So we're not really trying to play the world's coolest solo yet. We're just getting used to switching in and out of playing eighth notes, going to triplets, back to eighth notes, so that you can really feel the time and feel the triplets moving faster and, and then coming back end of time with the eighth notes. Once you're comfortable doing this with triplets, the next step is following the exact same process, but this time putting in 16th notes. So we'd start off by putting 16th notes on beat one. So the counting would be one E and a two and three and four and. Then you'd put the 16th notes on beat two. So the counting would be one and two E and a three and four and. Then on beat three, so the counting would be one and two and three E and a four and. And then of course on beat four, one and two and three and four E and a one. Then you would do two sets of 16th notes in a row. So you go one E and a two E and a three and four and. Now this can get a little bit tougher, so you might need to slow down the tempo a little bit. It doesn't really matter what tempo you're doing this at, as long as your 16th notes and your eighth notes are lined up. Take a listen to it. Then we would finish it off by playing 16th notes on beats three and four. So the counting would be one and two and three and a four and a. The idea on working through that process is to get really comfortable playing 16th notes wherever you want them and doing them on purpose. Now, when you practice like that, you're not gonna be playing the coolest bebop jazz lines ever but you are gonna get really comfortable playing faster notes and lining up your eighth notes and 16th notes or your eighth notes and triplets. Once you've got the concept of playing faster triplets and 16th notes down, then you wanna combine both of them in your line. You wanna think about snaking through your scale a little bit more and jumping to intervals. Then to take it to the next level and make it sound more like the type of lines you want to play, you want to add in some chromaticism. When you add in chromaticism, it's going to make it sound a lot more like bebop phrases. If you use this process to work on playing faster notes when you improvise, you will be crushing some bebop lines in your improv solos in no time at all.